Hello, uh, this is a video for Algebra 1, and it should say that it's Unit 3. I think it says that on your, uh, on your notes, but maybe not, not on this one. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to be able, solving linear equations and linear inequalities. Okay, so the first one, the first section is we want to solve linear equations with a variable on one side. Okay, we want to determine the input value that produces the same output value. Uh, we want to explain the steps used to solve an equation. Uh, we want to actually solve those linear equations, okay? And then we want to create one variable linear equations uh, to model and solve problems. Now, before we do anything, we have to talk about fractions. Now, remember, fractions are your friend, okay? Uh, anytime that we, uh, you know, talk about fractions, I know you guys get a little, uh, little irritated and upset, but just know that the fractions are always going to be there. They're always going to hang out with you on a, you know, Friday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon, especially when, you know, someone like Mr. Smith, you know, tells you, hey, let's go hang out on Friday. And then, you know, it's three o'clock on Friday. And he's like, yeah, sorry, something came up and I can't hang out. So at that point, I go home and hang out with my fractions. So uh, well, we've got four operations that we can do. Now, adding and subtracting fractions require a common denominator. Okay, a common denominator. Okay, and what, you know, what we do, you know, let's just think of some numbers here. Let's just take, say, like, you know, uh, you know say one-half uh, plus one-fourth. Okay, what is that going to give us? Now, what we have to do is we have to say, okay, I've got a one-half here and I've got one-fourth here. I can't add these together because I have a 2 and a 4, okay? And these are not common denominators. So the question is, okay, how could I turn 2 into a 4 using multiplication? And so what I want to do is I want to multiply the top and bottom by 2, because I know 2 times 2 gives me 4. So as a result, we get an equivalent form here, and I'm going to get 2 over 4 plus 1 fourth and what's that equal to? And then since we have a common denominator, we can write it over one number. And I have 2 plus 1, and all we have to do is evaluate that, and that's just going to give us 3 fourths, okay? And so, uh, you know, th this operation here, when I multiplied by 2 over 2, okay, I'm just going to multiply across, okay? And what happened was I took 2 times 1, which gave me 2, and then I took 2 times 2, which gave me 4, okay? Now, um, and, and we'll, we'll kind of explore that on the other side. Now, the other reason why I have to multiply, uh, you know, by 2 over 2, okay, 2 in the denominator, 2 in the, or 2 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, is because when I have the value 2 over 2, 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So, you know, I'm not changing the value of 1 half, okay? This is still 0.5, okay? If I have 1 half, that's the same thing as me writing 2 fourths, okay? This just puts it in a form for me to be able to add these together. Okay, now let's do another one. So another one that's a little bit tricky, and let's do say you know one seventh minus one third. Okay, and what's that equal to? Okay, and what you have to sit here and you have to go. Okay, I can't subtract these, and because we don't have a common denominator. Okay, here I've got a seven, here I've got a three. Now the the thing of it is, is there is no whole number or integer that I can multiply by three to get seven. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, so this isn't, you know, going to work. So the trick is, if you, can't do, if you can't manipulate one of the fractions, you have to manipulate both. And my rule of thumb is I just go ahead and multiply the other fraction by the opposite denominator. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by the denominator, which is 3 over 3, okay? Same thing over here, okay? I'm going to take 1 third, I'm going to multiply this by 7 over 7, Okay? And so when I do this, okay, again, I'm just going to multiply across, all right? And so we get this. We get 3, okay, 3 times 1 is 3, over 3 times 7, which is 21, okay? Minus 1 times 7 here, which is just going to give me 7, okay, over 3 times 7, which is 21. So I now get this new fraction, uh, 3 sevenths, or 3 21ths minus 7 21ths. Now, 1 seventh and 3 21ths are the same thing, okay? I don't have to do anything different. They're just written differently. Same thing with 1 third. That's the same equivalent value as 7 21ths. 
But what I want to do now is write it as one fraction and say, okay, this is all over 21, and I'm going to do 3 minus 7 in my numerator, which is then going to give me negative 4 21sts, okay? So it's important that we know how to add and subtract fractions just because it, we're, it's required for you, know, for you guys in this section. So I want to do a little bit of a review. Okay, the next thing I want to do is talk about multiplying and dividing fractions. So let me zoom in here. Now we know how to multiply, and I'm just going to take some random numbers here and say, well, what if I've got, you know, 3 eighths times uh, 2, oh gosh, fifths, okay? Now when I do this, I'm just going to multiply across. I'm going to take 3 times 2, so let me do equals, put a fraction there, uh, 3 times 2 is just going to get, so up here it's going to be 3 times 2 over, and then 8 times 5. Okay, so if I were to simplify this fraction, then I'm just going to get, you know, 3 times 2, which is 6, and then 8 times 5, which is 40. Okay, and so if I wanted to simplify this, I can actually, you know, both of these numbers are even numbers. Okay, I can make, I can make these numbers smaller. I'll, kill, I'll still keep the same value. But I'll, I'll keep these numbers a little bit smaller, and then I'm going to get, uh, if I were to say divide each of these by 2, then that's going to give me uh, 3 over 20. Okay, and, you know, 3 is an odd number, 20 is an even number. 3 doesn't go into 20 at all, so my, this is just my, the end result. Now, I'm going to do this problem another way, and I want you to kind of look at how I did this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3 eighths times 2 fifths, and what I notice here is that when I multiply these together, I can kind of look at the opposite numbers here, and I can look at 2 and 8, and I can simplify that as a fraction and call this 1 fourth, okay? And so then, all right, what I can do is I can rewrite this, and I can say, well, this is really just 3 fourths times 1 fifth. And if I multiply that across, I'm going to get 3 times 1, which is 3, over 4 times 5, which is 20, which gives me the same thing, okay? So, you know, you can multiply things just how you see them and then simplify later, or you can simplify first and then multiply, okay? I used to always do this, but then I really started to see the patterns of doing this, and, you know, that's just something you have to kind of do on your own. Okay, let's talk about division. This is the important one, Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about this, uh, you know, further on down the lesson, but let's just do this. Let's do, uh, say, 3 eighths divided by 2 fifths, okay? Now, I have no way of doing division with fractions. I don't know how to do that. And it's going to require you to do division with fractions, but the way that we do division with, divisions with fractions is we take our first term, our first number, 3 eighths, and we multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 halves. Okay, and as a result, okay, we multiply across, nothing's going to divide out, uh, and so we get up 3 times 5 is 15 over 8 times 2, which is 16, and that's our answer. So this is the, the, the big one, okay? This, you may want to watch this part a couple different times, because I will do this quite a bit. Okay, instead of dividing by a fraction, I will be multiplying by its reciprocal, okay? Now, guys, again, this is all review. If you know this stuff, that's great, okay? But if you don't, then we need to, you know, maybe watch this a couple different times and see what's going on, okay? So let's just go ahead and talk about this video or this, uh, you know, this section real quick. And we're solving equations. And, you know, one of the things that we do is we relate, you know, two different functions to each other, Okay. And the way to think about this is, you know, let's just say you, you were prompted with this, and it said solve the equation negative 4 thirds x plus 5 is equal to 1, okay? And what that looks like on the graph over here is the point where these two functions intersect. Now, what I've got is my function f of x, which is negative 4 thirds x plus 5. That's here, okay? That's my function f of x, and that's modeled by this line over here. We want to see... Uh, where, you know, where are these two functions equal, okay, and here's uh, g of x is negative 1, whoops, should be a negative 1, sorry, um, and that's this line here. We want to figure out what x value, okay, so what x value, what x value uh, gives us the same y value, 
All right. And so let's go ahead and just solve this. Now, we'll, we'll look at a graph of this here in a bit uh, and actually get a value. Um, but, you know, let's go ahead and take a look. And what I want to do is I want to solve this for x. And what this means is that I want to move all the numbers to, the, to one side of the equal sign and keep my x on the other. So, and we always do the opposite. So if I'm, doing, if I'm adding 5, then I want to subtract 5 from both sides. And so as a result, we get negative 4 thirds x is equal to, okay, and, and what I've done is when I take positive 5 minus 5, that adds to 0, okay? That just goes away. But then we have to actually do the math over here and say, okay, well, what's negative 1 minus 5? And that's going to give me negative 6, okay? Now, here's the tricky part okay, uh, is that we have this coefficient here that's a fraction, okay? Typically, you're used to just dividing by this number here, but we don't have anything, we don't know how to divide by fractions. So because we don't divide by fractions, we have to multiply this by the reciprocal, and we're going to call that negative 3 fourths, okay? And we're going to do that on both sides. And I'm going to put negative 6, I'm going to put that over 1, and I'm going to multiply this by negative 3 fourths. So as a result, okay, over here on the left side, here's what happens, okay? I get negative 3 times negative 4, which is going to give me positive 12, okay? I'm just going to do that work over here. And then 4 times 3 also gives me 12. Now, 12 divided by 12 gives me 1, okay? And if I take 1 times x, I just get x. So even over here, if I take negative 3 and divide it by 3, that's 1. If I take negative 4 divided by 4, that's 1. And if I have a negative times a negative, that's a positive. So the end result here, once you do that, you just get x, okay? And that's it. And so then we just multiply across over here. Negative 6 times negative 3 is going to give me positive 18, or as I like to say in the business, ocho teen. And then we're going to divide that by 4, okay? And each of these uh, numbers is divisible by, what is that, 2, Okay. And so as a result, we get that x is equal to 9 halves, okay? And this is our answer, okay? And let's just check this graphically. Now, what I know is that 9 halves has the same decimal value as x equals 4.5. Now, I'm going to graph both of these equations in Desmos, and I'm going to find their intersection point. Okay, so what I've done is I've graphed both of these equations in Desmos. I've graphed negative 4 thirds x plus 5, and that's this line here, and then I graph the, line, the equation y equals negative 1, okay? Uh, and you can put this in function notation, it doesn't really matter, but what I want you to notice here is that the x value that I got was 4.5, which is the same x value that I got here from doing it algebraically. So if you find the x value where they intersect, that's going to give you the same x value when you solve. So this is a way for you to check, right? These are the same, okay? And this is a way to check, okay? Uh, and there's a way to check algebraically. Like if I plugged in uh, 4.5 or 9 halves into this equation, I should get negative 1, okay? And that's the thing about a solution. A solution, a solution makes the equation true. Okay, it's the only x value that's going to make, if I plug in here, is going to give me negative 1. So it makes the equation true. All right. All right, let's go on to the next page. <laughs> okay, let's come in here and let's take a look at this uh, where it says solving for, for specific input values. And remember, input is just another way for us to say x value. Okay, um, and so... It says, you're given this table for the linear functions for f of x. So you have this function f, which is 5.75, and that's just the horizontal line through 5.75. So at any x value, I'm going to get that y value of 5.75. Okay, the function g is the function 3x plus 8. So what we have here is we have, uh, you know, all these different points here. And what we want to do is we want to, what is the input value for which f of x is equal to g of x is true? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5.75, okay, and set it equal to 3x plus 8. So what x value on here is going to give me something like around 5.75? Now, I can't really tell from the table because my y values are whole numbers, 
but I know it's going to be somewhere in between uh, x equals, so the number will be at somewhere between x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. Okay, so it'll be a fraction. And then the y value, uh, and I know that because 5.75 is in between 5 and 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually solve this. Uh, and so let's do 5.75 is equal to 3x, and that's plus 8. Yeah, plus 8. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all the values over except for, uh, you know, x. So I'm going to move my 8 first. And since I'm adding 8, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Okay. And this is going to give me, uh, I got 3x on the right side, 5.75 minus 8. And that's going to give me a value of negative 2.25. Okay. And then I'm going to divide everything by 3 and then by 3. So if I take negative 2.25 and divide that by 3, I'm going to get negative 0.75, which is equal to x. Now I could, this, it's fine to leave it in the decimal form, but you could also say that this is x is equal to negative 3 fourths. Okay, now here's what I want to do. Let's plug this into Desmos, okay? Let's do this as your first equation, uh, y equals 5.75, and then 3x plus 8 as your second equation. And let's see at what x value these intersect at. Okay, let me do that real quick. Okay, and so what I've done is I've just graphed those two equations. Okay, I graphed 3x plus 8 in one, and then I graphed uh, y equals 5.75 in the other, and then I wanted to see the x value at which they intersected. And it turns out that we get the same thing. We get negative, point zero, negative point 0.75, which is the same thing that we got here. Okay, so we know that this is the correct solution. Okay, so this is the way to check. Okay, so you can do that on Desmos and check your calculator. Okay, all right, let's take a look uh, on how to solve these and some steps that we have to solve them. Um, you know, what we want to do is, uh, you know, take a look at these steps okay, on how to solve, and we want to use a distributive property to simplify, combine like terms, this is the really important thing, uh, isolate the variables, put them on one side, and then check your solution, okay? So, um, you know, the thing that I want to do first is, let's take a look at this equation. Now, I'm going to rewrite this into something that's usable, and the, and the reason why is because all of my terms here are numbers, but some of them have fractions, okay? So I'm going to rewrite all of my numbers as fractions and operate it with it like that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to rewrite this as, instead of x over 5, that's the same thing as saying 1 fifth times x, and then minus 7 fourths uh, plus 2 over 1 times x, and that's equal to 5 over 1, minus 3 over 4. So any number that I had, I put it over 1 to put it as a fraction. Okay, now the thing I want to do now is combine like terms, all right? So my like terms are the terms that contain an x or they don't contain an x, okay? And so these two numbers here I can combine, okay? Now I'm going to rewrite this again and put these numbers next to each other, okay? Because addition is commutative, I can reorder this and rewrite it so it's a little bit more helpful. And so I'm going to rewrite this as 1 fifth x uh, plus 2 over 1 x minus 7 over 4 is equal to 5 over 1 minus 3 fourths. Okay, now again, my terms with x are right here. I'm going to combine these. The other terms that I need to combine are my numbers. Okay, I can add and put the numbers together and do whatever I want with those. Okay. Now, in order to add these two terms together, I have to get a common denominator. So here's a common, here's 5 and here's 1. So what do I have to multiply 1 by to get 5? So that one's pretty easy. I'm going to multiply the top by 5 and the bottom by 5. And we end up getting 1 fifth x plus 10 over 5 x minus 7 fourths is equal to 5 over 1 minus 3 fourths. Okay, now because I have a common denominator between these two terms, I can combine them. Now all I'm going to do is add the numbers in my numerator and keep a denominator of 5. So if I take 1 plus 10, that's going to give me 11 fifths, and there's an x attached to that, minus 7 fourths, 
and that's equal to 5 over 1 minus 3 fourths, okay? Now, uh, over here, I've, I'm going to get a common denominator of 4, uh, because I have a denominator of 1 and I have a denominator of 4. I can multiply this by 4 to get 4, all right? So I'm going to multiply this top and bottom by 4 and 4. So as a result, and I'm going to move this equation up over here. And so we've got, what was it, 11 fifths x. So I've got 11 fifths x minus 7 fourths is equal to 20 fourths minus 3 fourths. Okay, so what I can do now is I can combine these numbers on the right. I can do 20 minus 3, which gives me 17 fourths. So I've got 17 fourths, and that's equal to negative 7 fourths uh, plus 11 fifths x. So if I add 7 fourths to both sides, add 7 fourths, then I end up getting 11 fifths x is equal to and this is going to give me 24 fourths, okay? Now, this can be simplified, okay, to 6. So I've got 11 fifths x is equal to 6, all right? So now what I want to do is typically I would divide by 11 fifths and move that to the other side. But I'm going to multiply and say, because, you know, remember from the other page, uh, you know, I don't know how to divide by a fraction, but I know how to multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, so I can multiply this by 5 elevenths. So then what we get is we get that, you know, these divide out, okay, these go away, and you're left with that x is equal to 30. This is 6 over 1 times 5 over 11. So 6 times 5 is 30. 1 times 11 is just 11. So I get x is equal to 30 elevenths. Now that number as a decimal, let me write this up here, okay, is, okay, 30 elevenths is going to be, you know, that x, whoops, that x is approximately uh, 2.727, okay, roughly, all right? And so if you went and graphed, you know, if you went to the graph, you put this, this part in as one equation, okay, y equals all of that, and then do this one as another equation, okay, then you'll find that they intersect at the x value of 2.727, okay? But, the, you know, we want our answers in fraction form. Fractions are our friend, okay? So, all right, let's go ahead and go down to the next one. Uh, and this is using the distributive property, okay? And so, what, you know, what I want to do first is I want to distribute. Always distribute first if you can. And so, uh, remember that, you know, when I have the 2 on the outside, I'm just going to multiply that by the 9.7 and then the 4. 8x. So we get this as a result. We get 3.4 plus 2 times 9.7, okay, minus uh, 2 times 4.8x, and this is equal to 61.2. Okay, now we will need our calculator for most of this because it's hard for me to do the math in my head, uh, but, you know, use your calculator when you need it, okay, no issues with that. Okay, so I've got 3.4 uh, 9.7 times 2 is going to give me 19.4, so 3.4 plus 19.4, and then minus uh, 2 times 4.8, so 4.8 times 2 is 9.6, so minus 9.6x, and this is all equal to 61.2. So then from there, I've got 3.4 and 19.4, so 19.4 plus 3.4, is going to get 22.8 minus 9.6x, and that's equal to 61.2. Now, I'm going to go ahead and subtract from both sides the 22.8 minus 22.8, and that's going to give me negative 9.6x is equal to, okay, 61.2 minus 22.8, is going to give me 38.4, so 38.4. Now, I want to divide both sides here by negative 9.6, divide by negative 9.6. So then, all right, we get an x value, so divide by 9.6, of x is equal to 4, okay? And that's it. That's all we're doing. So, all right, so that's using the distributive property, so make sure you always do that. 
Okay, um, on this one, okay, it says that um, a geological study shows that the Rainbow Glacier has decreased from an area of all this miles squared in 1966 to an area of 1,100,000, whatever, miles squared in 2005. Assume that this change can be modeled by the linear function f of t, okay, where t is years since 1900. Using the linear model, what will, what will the size of the glacier be, or in what year will the size of the glacier be 1 million square meters? So, you know, what I would do is I'd want to take this function, because t is a measure of time in years, and set that equal to 1 million. So if I took 1 million and set that equal to negative 3,077.19t plus 1,487,163.85, okay, and I'm just going to solve this equation. Now, it's a little daunting because these numbers are pretty huge, but let's just go ahead and subtract 1,487,163.85 from both sides. So minus 1,487,163.85. And as a result, here's what we get. Negative 487,000. 163.85, and this is equal to negative 3,077.19t. So if I divide both sides by negative 3,077.19, divide by negative 3,077.19. Okay, if I divide those, then we get that t is equal to 158.3. 3 years. Okay, so during what year? Now, t is years after 1900. Okay, I need to add 158.3, so this would be in the year 2000. Okay, well, 100 years, yeah, 2058. So this would be 2058.3 years. And you can't have 0.3 years, so we need to round that up, and we're going to get 2,059 years. Or as we say in the business, 2,059 años. Okay. All right, so that's what we've got. Um, all right, let's go to the next page. This might be it. And I'm just going to go ahead and stop there. If you want to do the next problem on your own, that's fine, but go ahead and just get started on the notes. Or I'm sorry, these are the notes. Get started on the, uh, the review. Or not the review. Gosh, what am I talking about? Um, please get started on the assignment and the quiz on ingenuity. Hope you had a nice day. Talk to you later. Bye.